think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, Diana, for inviting Kelsey and I to share about our organizations. I'm going to briefly explain kind of how we work together. We are different organizations, um, but work very closely together. And WSADA is our trade association, and we are members of that, of that organization. And they are made up of the 13 Western states plus Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands. Um, and so the states pay a membership fee to be able to access USDA federal funds to do some of our work. So I'm going to briefly, uh, if everybody could uh, mute themselves, put any questions you have in the chat, um, and then we're going to answer at the end of uh, Kelsey's presentation after um, we both go, and then uh, you know we'll do that at the end. And so I'm Julie Johnson, and I'm with the Washington State Department of Agriculture International Marketing Program. And I handle the export development and outreach for the program. The sectors in our trade portfolio are um, agricultural crops, so fruits, vegetables, grains, and hay, livestock and animal products, dairy, meat, poultry, seafood, processed food and beverages, frozen and packaged, beer and wine. We do spirits. Um, so really, as many of you know, we grow over 300 crops, and so Washington State has a lot of diversity. I'm going to jump in a couple slides and talk about our trade statistics, just because it's important for companies to be able to expand their businesses. So in 2023, Washington origin food and ag exports were $7.5 billion. And then 2023, the total food and ag through our Washington ports were 19 billion. So that we do have products that go through our ports that aren't grown here, such as soybean and corn and a lot of other um, products. About 30% of all Washington grown food and ag products are exported. So about 90% of our wheat, 70% of our potatoes, about 30% of apples, and 25% of our cherries. And these are estimates. If you really wanted the, the true numbers, you could go to the commodity commissions um, and get those. Trends that we are seeing is our numbers are down a bit from 2022. A few things that could factor into that are market price, price fluctuations, inflation, and also the exchange rates. So here are our top trading partners and top export products. Um, our top trading partners are Canada. We are exporting $1.3 billion. Japan, $1.2 billion. China, as difficult as China um, can be, we are getting $857 million of product to China. Mexico is number four at $687 million. Korea at 497 million. The next five are the Philippines, Taiwan, Indonesia, Hong Kong, and Vietnam. You can go to our website at agr.wa.gov and in our statistics, you can click on these different top markets and you'll get the top products that are going to each market, which is is really can be really interesting. And then our top products in 2023 were frozen French fries, believe it or not, at 1.1 billion, fish and seafood at 1.1 billion. <clears throat> so frozen French fries, you know, it, it was a rounding up and, and they were a little bit higher than the fish and seafood. Wheat is at 684 million and we really work hard to scrub that number because not all the wheat out of our ports are Washington. And so Rebecca Weber in my office works with um, the Grain Commission as well as our grain program to really get that number as accurate as we can. Apples at 683 million, dairy at 563 million, and then the next five are hay, beef, hop cones, fresh sweet cherries, and pulses, which are beans, lentils, and peas. 
So here's our mission, and I'm not going to read it, but really we are trying to help companies expand. We make buyer-seller connections. We deliver resources. We advocate for global market access and work with industry and their needs. How does our program help? We work with small to medium-sized Washington suppliers of agricultural and food products, both fresh and processed. And then we work with beverage companies, nursery, hay, and pet food. 98% of, of exports are small businesses. So I want to say that again. 98% um, of exports are small businesses. So really no business is, you know, too small or, you know, they can grow um, to be able to, to get to that point. And so the three core functions are, of our program are expert development, which is the work that I do. And that's a lot of resource referral, um, helping companies get, um, become expert ready. And then we have the expert assistance work, which is a lot of the buyer seller matchmaking, technical assistance. And then the market access work, which is a government to government work and the trade barrier mitigation. I want to talk briefly about who who we help. We really help small to medium sized companies in Washington state at all levels of the exporting journey. So new to export companies, a company that has no prior experience in exporting. They've maybe been operating a year or less or 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 up to a few years, actually. Um, they've done some research and are just really getting started on their journey. And those are really the companies that I work with a lot. And then we work with new to expert companies with some experience. So a company that is domestic focus and is selling reactively to foreign customers due to inquiries, usually over email or a website. They really have no clear global market strategy. And then we work with uh, companies that are currently exporting. So they actively sell their products to customers in other countries. They're looking for new markets around the world. And they really understand the different cultures, rules, and competition um, in the various countries. So here's our trade team um, that's based in Washington um, State. So Ryan Ham is our manager and she does the market access work, collaborates with industry and federal partners. She does the governor led and director led trade missions. They went to, um, she went to Vietnam last month. So that was a governor's mission. And then myself, I do the outreach for the program, um, trainings are usually the first point of contact or, and I really call myself the great connector. So um, I'll talk more about um, the work that I do. And then the three other trade specialists, Rebecca Weber, Zachary Garza, and Elisa Dom, they focus on regions as well as markets and certain uh, products. So here's our, our list, and I can send these slides um, to Diana to share with everybody. But you might work with several of us. So say you're a hop company trying to get your hops to Vietnam. You're going to work with Zachary because he covers hops and Rebecca Weber because she um, covers the Vietnam market. So here's kind of a slide on the export development work that I do, export training, market identification. I really do a lot of resource referral. I like to set up about a 30 minute consultation with a company, find out where they're at, what they're trying to do, where they're trying to go, um, get them into our database. That's how they will receive information on our program. Um, they can receive trade leads by being in our database, um, webinar information, as well as um, just all different kinds of acti activities and opportunities. And then here are some of the questions that we talk about. You know, do you have your exporting in your business plan? Because if you don't, the Small Business Development Center can help you with that, and it's a free resource. Do you have commitment um, from your um, owners, which a lot of times 
that, you know, you are the owner. And so, you know, you are the one actually committing. And so um, do you have company support? Which products do you want to export and why? Some products, you may have several, but only two of them are going to be good for the Korea market or so. So those are things to really look into and sort through. What are you looking for in a buyer and what information and resources do you need to be successful? <clears throat> I'm also part, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Washington Export Outreach Team. And here's a list, <clears throat> excuse me, of all of our um, partners. So it's Wasada. Kelsey's going to talk later about her organization. The Small Business Development Center, they have three international people that, you know, focus just on international work. IFAQA, which is the Export Finance Assistance Center of Washington, Exxon Bank, the Small Business Administration, Washington State Department of Commerce for a STEP grant, um, and then the U.S. Commercial Services. They have programs as well as the Gold Key Service. So we, these are the partners, and there's others as well, but these are the partners that we refer to each other. Uh, before COVID, we did seminars. We traveled around to different, um, you know, cities in Washington. Now we're doing webinars, and it's really for small to medium-sized Washington companies to learn how to access local resources to help their small business expand globally. So our takeaways are really that small businesses can successfully export. There's professional help at no or low cost. And really, there's one entry door to resource access. So you can reach out to any of us. And depending on the resources you are needing, we can get you to those resources. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit about the technical assistance that we do. We really do that every day. We are getting questions about all kinds of things. And so. Um, the three other trade specialists and our in-market representatives, which I'll talk more about, they do this uh, technical assistance, the market intelligence work, the e export-import documentation, the product adaptation, shipping, payment, um, customs clearance, and, and then I do a lot of resource referral as well as our, our other um, trade specialists. The trade activities, which are inbound missions, outbound mission, trade shows, and promotions. And a lot of this work is done through our trade association, WSADA, which Kelsey is going to talk more about. We really have to rely on the federal funds to help our Washington companies. And so we only have so many state funds, which cover our salaries and benefits and a little travel. And so to be able to to really help our Washington companies, we rely on the funding, the federal funding as well. And then there's the buyer seller matchmaking work, which are trade leads. Again, it's really key for companies to get into our database so that they can receive the trade leads. We have a public website, so buyers can go directly to that site and search for certain products. We, ha we help with buyer and supplier itinerary. So delegations are coming here and they're looking um, at us to kind of set up meetings and different site visits. Really the work we do is helping you find qualified buyers, agents, and distributors. So these photos, that's Elisa, Zach, and I were at the National Restaurant Association in Chicago. We had a Washington State booth a couple of years ago. And then the um, bottom photo is a buyer seller meeting. You know, it's about a 30 minute, usually 25 to 30 minute, and we call it speed dating. So the buyers rotate kind of from table to table. And that was a meeting uh, that was held in Korea in March. So I mentioned about our international trade representatives. So we um, have decided with our state funds that we are going to hire or have these trade representatives. And so they are there to help Washington uh, companies get your products to those markets. They are a free resource, again, free to Washington companies. We pay their contract fee. 
So we have Avia reps in Japan, Green Air International in South Korea, United Base Company in Vietnam, Arisa International in Southeast Asia, which they cover Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and the Philippines. And then we we have uh, Imalinx in Mexico and Central America, and Wasada uses Imalinx as well. So there's some really good synergy there. And then we've decided we're going to have two project employees. Um, sorry, uh, representatives. So we have um, coverage in South America and also the Middle East. But again, those are just for projects. Those aren't ongoing assistance. So here is some of the work that they do. Um, they send trade leads and can help companies with direct contacts with importers and buyers. They can help with market research pricing and packaging information. Um, what we've done a few times is a small business development center. Well, um, they've got a pricing calculator that they can help you come up with a landed cost. And then say it's for the Korea market, um, I've reached out to Danny and he can do pricing research on his side as well. And that just helps you as a company um, come up with the, the correct price for that market. They can help with guidance on shipping customs and local requirements, trade barrier assistance. A lot of times this is where um, we hear from the larger companies. So they have their products stuck in customs. And so they need um, our representatives assistance to help, you know, get that product out of customs. They can help schedule in market appointments. So I tell companies leverage Wasada funding. You use Wasada's program to get you to say Foodex in Japan, which is a large trade show. You can spend a couple extra days, Keiko in, with Avia reps in Japan can set up additional meetings with appointments. If she's available, she can attend those. So um, my advice is, you know, give our representatives plenty of time. Um, I've had companies, you know, I'm on the, the flight. I'm going to be in your country in, you know, one day. Can't, you know, so so please just give them enough time um, so that hopefully they can fit that into um, their schedules. They can provide translation services. So if you have a brochure that needs to be translated in, in their language, um, you know, they won't do a 25 page document, but they will do a brochure or a one page type document. They're really local knowledge and provide, you know, they've got the personal experience in those markets. And then they travel to Washington once a year for company consultations and i'll talk about that in a minute and so a couple of examples of work that they've done is arisa international their thailand office connected a cat food company in bellingham to a large pet food manufacturer so now this bellingham company is exporting frozen ground cod as an ingredient um, another thing um, avia reps um, work with the Agricultural Trade Office in Japan, and they had a new product showcase. So Washington companies, we had 10 participate. They they sent product and brochures, and they didn't actually have to travel to Japan. Keiko was there to represent their company, their product. She set up a, a virtual meeting to, to learn about that in advance. So it was a really good opportunity. The cost was just sending samples um, and it was really good opportunity to have um, get exposure in the Japan market for your product. So I'm going to plug our in-market rep visit, which is this year. They come once a year is August 19th through the 23rd. We really usually go to Western Washington and Eastern Washington, but this year we've decided to focus on Northwest Washington. So we are going to do one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations with companies in Seattle and then Mount Vernon. Um, and then we also do site visits. So if there's any companies that are here that are in these areas that would like us to, to you know, stop by for a meeting and a facility tour, that would be great. Um, really, 
the companies have 30 minutes um, for each consultation. You can sign up with one rep or all of them. It's first come, first serve. Um, and then you will walk away with a market briefing page, you know, as well for that, that market. But it's really the company's time to talk about anything they want to do, um, get knowledge about that market. They can bring product to taste and get, you know, taste profile information. Um, they can get label feedback. So it's really a great opportunity for companies to build relationships with these representatives as well. Um, so that when you reach out to them, you've met, you've talked, they know who you are. Um, so I would, um, I'll be sending out recruitment um, probably early July. So you can look for that information. Real quickly, these photos are from last year. So we got to um, do air freight. So had not um, been able to tour a air freight before. So that was really interesting. And then there's a couple photos of our one-on-one -on -one meetings, one in Tri-Cities and one in Seattle. And then we visited the Waluk um, Wine Company in Mattawa. And so um, that's part of our group there. Um, here's a few photos I wanted to share of activities, just the, the different variety of things that we do. So the left-hand photo is an inbound blueberry mission from the Philippines. I worked with the U.S. High Bush Blueberry Council to put together an itinerary that came to Washington as well as Oregon. The middle photo is Winter Fancy Foods, and that is a Wasada activity. This is a Washington company here, but we had 30 companies attend Winter Fancy Foods from the Western U.S., and they did a kiosk format. Um, and so it's a really great opportunity for new to export companies. You don't have to be new to export, but it's really affordable. It's about you know, half the cost of a booth. Um, and these shows are really great for new to export companies as well, not only because it's affordable, but because you meet domestic buyers as well as international buyers. And then the photo on the right is Keiko with the Via Reps in Japan and a staff member. And that was at the new product showcase. I want to share a quick success story, and this is with Susie Jensen Willine Cider. I like to really share her story because she's took taken advantage of all the We Up partners and what we have to offer. So she won a SBA Small Business Award, and this was before COVID. And I reached out to her, and she's like, "Gosh, I I never thought about exporting." So. Um, we talked and really it's taken her about three years. Um, she's been working with a buyer in uh, Korea. Um, you know, she connected, COVID hit, and of course that slowed things down. She did a great job sending photos of har Harvest, her cidery, events. Um, she just really stuck with it. She did visit the importer once and they connected, you know, through email, you know, throughout COVID. But she was able to send a pallet to Korea about a couple months ago for the test market. So we're really excited um, to see where this goes. And so that's her in her orchard, the top picture. And then the below picture is Danny Kim from Korea and myself. Um, two years ago during the rep visit, we visited um, her cidery. So it was really a great opportunity because most of our reps have worked with her. So it was a great opportunity for everybody to meet. Um, I'm almost done. Other important links, especially for new to export, is trade.gov. There's a basic guide to exporting that's available. And then your local regional commissions, as well as trade associations and national trade associations are a great resource as well. Um, and that's all I have. I want to thank you for your time. I am going to let Kelsey jump in 
And then we are going to do the questions at the end. So thank you very much. Let me get this stop sharing. So Kelsey, you're on. Okay, thank you, Julie. That was great. Um, that'll, that's a good thing that you started because it'll definitely show how you and I overlap with the, one another. Um, does everyone see my screen? Yeah, and everyone can hear me? Sounds good. Okay. So like Julie said, my name is Kelsey Anderson. I am an engagement executive at USADA or the Western United States Agricultural Trade Association. Um, and one of the five states that I cover is Washington. So that is why Diana invited me here today. And I thank you so much for that. Um, so getting to know USADA, we are an independent nonprofit trade association. Um, and like Julie said, we work in partnership with the 15 member states. And that also includes Guam and the CNMI. Um, we've been dedicated to exporting for around a little over 40 years. Um, we receive our funds from the USDA's Market Access Program, um, and this is a program that supports overseas marketing by um, overseas marketing and promotional activities by our U.S. companies. Our mission is to increase international growth of Western agribusinesses by providing financial support, export readiness, and business development services. And our vision for 2033 is Western agribusinesses are thriving in world markets. Um, while we are not a government agency, we are closely linked to the state and federal departments of agriculture. Um, each state has an agricultural marketing division that works in partnership with us. Um, for Washington, those are the five or so people that she mentioned. Um, and they work with us to provide a mix of activities and services or market research or um, what was it, the technical assistance that Julie was talking about before when it comes to overcoming trade barriers um, and things like that. Um, so everyone can see my screen. We're all good. Perfect. Okay. So you must be headquartered in the Western U.S., be a small to medium-sized agribusiness in accordance to uh, the Small Business Association, and then your products must be at least 50% U.S. grown. So the Wasada Blueprint. Um, we work with a lot of companies that are first kind of thinking about exporting. They're not really experienced yet. So the the way that you kind of move through our programs is you start with export readiness um, and you have access to our market intelligence, to our in-country contractors, um, then like monthly um, insight reports and things like that. Um, and then you move to our Global Connect, which is where we connect you with foreign buyers at smaller stages. Um, and it also provides um, cheaper ways of meeting people overseas. And then finally, we have Fund Match, and this is our 50% reimbursement program um, when it comes to your marketing activities overseas. So this program allows you to stay competitive. Uh, okay, so Export Readiness. Uh, this is the program that divided that provides data-driven guidance to help you identify your key markets. Um, like I said before, we have our in-country experts in Korea, the ASEAN region, Japan, China, Latin America, and Africa. Um, and these contractors also send us market intelligence reports every month to look into consumer trends or what products are doing really well, what aren't so much, um, and things like that. They're posted on our website every month. Uh, and then we also have tailored market data, which we can, we do this on a company or a, what is the word I'm looking for? We do this on a, like a request based process. We do it through the Euromonitor. It's a massive, massive data system that has um like i think 100 different countries listed on there so we could look up your product see how well they're doing in japan see what the forecast of um how that product would do in the future and what it was like in the past and things like that in global connect so this is where we really overlap with uh, the state departments of ag we work in conjunction with them to provide trade up trade opportunities without the uh high expenditures so first um, is international trade shows. Julie also touched on these. Um, our Global Connect program will typically purchase anywhere from 10 to 40 trade show booths within a larger USA pavilion. And then when companies purchase their booth through us, they're usually at a cheaper rate. And then there's also more perks on the show floor like, um, like interpreters or coordinated one-on-one -on -one buyer meetings um and things like that and these are just some of the ones that we typically attend that are listed here but it can fluctuate a little bit 
Inbound and outbound missions, Julie also touched on these. Um, these are a super cost effective way to kind of get your toe into exporting. So inbound missions are when we bring in foreign buyers from another country into somewhere within the Western US, uh, in your case, Washington or something like that. And you meet and have like a speed dating kind of scenario. You have about 20, 30 minutes with each buyer and you can talk and really have that time to uh, improve your relationship. And then we also, um, when it's inbound, they can go on facility tours or go see your farm or whatever it may be. Um, so again, it just kind of increases that relationship even more. And then outbound missions are just the inverse of that. So we will send our companies to whatever region it may be to go meet with those buyers that way. And then you can go see their grocery stores or the restaurants, whatever, whatever it is. Um, and it also is another way to build that relationship as well. And these are super cost effective. I think inbound missions for the time being are anywhere from like 25 to 50 bucks right now. Uh, so yeah, really cost effective. And finally for Global Connect, our trade leads. So they're um, requests from foreign buyers seeking a specific um, US, uh, US product. And when it comes in, um, we will pre-screen them for authenticity. Um, and they're usually coming from either the USDA or FAS. Um, so they are legitimate trade leads. Um, and once you have a My website account, you have direct access to this. And FunMatch. Um, so FunMatch helps our Western US food companies remind or remain competitive internationally by providing 50% reimbursement on eligible marketing activities. Um, so the first year that you apply, if you are a first time exporter, you can receive up to $25,000. Um, if you are more experienced, you can receive up to $50,000. And that is typically up to our um, fund match manager to decide where you where you would fall. Um, and then after that first year and your claims have gone really well, you can um, receive up to $300,000 in reimbursement. So in order to be eligible for fund match, it's all the same requirements to um, have a MyWSAT account, but um, your product has to be clearly labeled as a product of the USA, um, and then you have to be in business for at least one year. Oh, and there's also a $250 application fee for the fund match program, and then a 6% administration fee and that six percent comes out of um, however much money will be allocated to you um, and just to touch on the u.s origin statement because it is uh, the cornerstone of why wusada is here um, so having product of the usa or grown in washington or made in washington whatever it may be that that's a label that we would need to have um, on your products so these are some of the things that fund match can cover this is not even close to all of the um, activities I can cover. Um, if you go to our website, go to the Fun Match Guide, pages 34 through 78 <laughs> is all of the um, reimbursable activities that you can do. But I listed some of the popular ones here, especially people who are just kind of starting in the Fun Match program. Um, we do have approved domestic trade shows. So if there is a trade show that has a large enough foreign buyer uh, presence, it can qualify for Fun Match. So you can get 50% reimbursement on that booth and say, um, you purchased a booth through our Global Connect program, which is already discounted, and then you have the Fund Match program, so that you can also take an additional 50% off of that already discounted price. So Fund Match and Global Connect work really well in conjunction, or er, really well together, um, and things like that. Um, we can also cover freight and shipping when it comes to sending over samples um, and label and packaging modifications. That's a really big one, especially because we have a lot of people exporting to Canada. And as we know, they change a lot of their requirements. Um, so every time you have to change that label or package, you can use FunMatch to get 50% reimbursement on that. So this is just kind of like a quick little snapshot of what the process looks like. So you'll have your fund match consultation just because there is a lot of paperwork um, and documentation required with this. So we want to make sure that you get started on the right foot. Um, and then you submit your application. We will review the allocation. When, once you sign your contract, you go and conduct those activities and be sure to require or compile all that documentation, submit your claims. Wasada and our claim coordinators will look through it. And if there's any additional documentation we might need, we will work with you to get that documentation um, to be sure that those funds are dispersed to you. 
Um, so like I said, fun match is a little bit of a learning curve. So we've come up with ways to make it a little bit easier to understand. We have a fun match liaison. She, her whole goal or her whole uh, role is just working directly with our companies um, and walking them through the process and making sure that they have all the tools that they need. Um, the fun match guide is like very, <laughs> like if anything, just make sure you read the guide. If nothing else, then from what we pro provide, the guide will definitely um, guide you the way that you should go. Um, and then we have tutorials and example claims online. So you can look through those for whatever activity you might be um, doing. Say it's like an in-store display in Japan, whatever it is, there's a tutorial to show you all the documentation that you're gonna need. Um, and then we also have, it's not listed here, but we have uh, checklists as well that we'll send to you. So you can make sure you check off, like I have that receipt, I have that invoice, I have that, whatever it may be. And then our whole claims process is online. So it walks you through the steps. Um, I have a couple success stories from Washington. Um, the past few times that I've tried to summarize these, I've kind of botched it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read <laughs> the slide. Um, so this is E&E &E Foods from Renton, Washington. Um, and Mark Fauti, which is the VP of sales said, our biggest need is to pinpoint targeted potential clients. And Wasada did a terrific job of screening prospective clients. Their staff is so knowledgeable and willing to assist and the overseas liaisons who helped us set, set up things locally have been great. We are able to have spirited conversations, particularly with Vietnamese companies who had not heard of our company before. So this is them just starting to get into the process. Um, and then Nutriberry from Seattle participated in the 2021 Taiwan uh, promotion and new to export products showcase. Um, this was coordinated by the Global Connect program um, and the Department of Ag. By participating in the event, Nutriberry met a Taiwan broker who placed an initial order valued at $10,000. The broker relationship, Nutriberry's first in Southeast Asia, brings an opportunity to generate exp <laughs> exponential amounts of re reoccurring revenue. Um, the owner says, our sales cycle is longer but higher, so once the relationship with our broker is fully realized, the value of our initial order has the potential to grow into a million in recurring sales. And the last one, <laughs> Pacific Valley Foods. Um, I'll just read the blurb from Susan, the senior vice president. Um, trade shows and travel can, can also be extremely expensive, especially for small companies. Without the assistance of the Fund Match program, we would not have been able to participate in this many shows. Um, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but to have a MyWasada account is 100% free. You'll get direct access to those trade leads, and um, then you'll be able to get direct access to our export education as well. And then obviously, if you sign up for any Global Connect events or if you apply for Fund Match, um, that'll have a cost there. But the the account itself is 100% free. And that is all I have. Um, you can reach out to export at wasada.org or Kelsey, which is K-E-L-S-E-Y at wasada.org if you have any questions. Great. Were there any questions in the chat, Diana? I'm not seeing any just yet, but I did uh, come up with a few of my own, but I will wait in case for other folks to. Uh... Oh no, kick it off. Normally someone has to break the ice. So. <laughs> okay. So just because I have uh, some familiarity with Wusada, I don't. Most folks know I worked with Wusada uh, in the early, I believe, '96 to 2000 thereabouts, uh, and so I. Um, just some things came to mind just for clarification. So the fund, the market access program, the MAP program that comes from the USDA, uh, is that mm -hmm. right? Federal funding. Yeah. And then the Foreign Agricultural Service, FAS, what is their role uh, with what you folks are doing? I know they always put out a really good newsletter. So that was my one thing. I missed that newsletter and can other folks sign up for that? Um, and yeah. so I'll let you address these. And then we'll um, just kind of for FAS. I I've only been here for two years, but this is my understanding of it is basically they kind of set up all the rules that we have to follow, especially when it comes to the fund match program and what is eligible and what isn't. 
Um, does that make sense, Julie? Am I answering that right? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So, so the money is funneled through the federal government, yeah. and so they do set set the rules. But then they also, um, like the last couple years, FAS has done um, outbound missions as well. So I think no, they yeah. are doing six different missions this year to different markets, and so that's another opportunity for companies to be able to travel and. Those missions are really great because a lot of directors go. There's people from other states that go, um, you know, just and then companies go as well. But just the relationships you build and learn from other companies and states is great as well. And so um, and then you also meet the foreign ag service people in those markets. And those are great connections as well. They have trade specialists in those markets because they're trying to help U.S. get all of our products are there, right? And so they have trade specialists there as well. So, I mean, that's there's a lot more to it, right? But that's kind mm -hmm. of a, a general background of, of, of how they operate. Great. Okay. And we do have a question, Tana. Are the programs for manufacturers only, are, are they for manufacturers only or original producers? So value added and that sort of thing. All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, we work with brokers, uh, we work with trading companies, we work with, you know, it's, it's kind of all, all of the, the above. And, and then as Washington State, so if your product's not 50% US origin, um, you might not qualify for WSADA, but you can always work with the Washington State Department of Ag. Um, so different programs have different qualifications. <clears throat> so just because you don't qualify for WSADA, there's other opportunities. So it, it's always good to to reach out and then you'll kind of find out which programs you you qualify for. So if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. And I have a few more, <laughs> so that kind of segues into uh, what Tana was asking. So they used to have a generic and a branded program back in the day. So that's commodities like beef, dairy, uh, and that versus, you know, customized brands. Do, do you still have a focus on that or is it all kind of combined now? And you probably touched on that and I was not uh, cap uh, focused or didn't catch that. Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> so do you specifically do you when they're going through the fund match program, is it all together whether you have a commodity to sell or export and or if you have a branded product, is it all in one fund match program? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. They used to have them very segregated. So okay. I didn't know if there was special uh, assistance for mm -hmm. commodity type of products well and, and the other thing i'll i'll jump jump in the commodity commissions they get federal funding as well um so in the old days you couldn't use both you had to use wasada or 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 you had to use you know do it through the commodity commissions now it's kind of an agreement as long as the commodity commissions know what you're doing, you know, and so there's a lot more communication between the two. Um, so say we're doing a, a, a inbound mission on apples, you know, the um, Apple Commission wants to know about about it just so that that they're aware and there's not overlap and we're not trying to do the same activities. So um, so that's kind of how we work with the different commodity commissions. Okay. And then one that's always kind of very important. Is there a cap on that? Uh, how long you can get that 300 K per year? So it's you probably grade eight up, you know, graduate up to that. But uh, let's say I got 300,000 for two years in a row. Do, do do folks ever graduate out of that? Um, it, there used to be it used to be you could only use fund match for five years. That's no longer a thing um, as far as capping out of that when we had the ATP program we had some companies that did qualify for that um right now we have 
the wrap program and I don't know I don't know yet how that is going to work but for now let's just say it doesn't no. happen yeah Companies don't pretty cap rare. Out. you know I mean yeah. three three hundred thousand is a lot of money and so the company would have to spend six hundred thousand mm. not to say it can't be done but but yeah, I Which, I haven't heard of that ever being done, and I've been doing this for a really long time. So, the majority of our companies that work with us, I think it's over ninety percent have like ten or fewer employees. Um, so having an additional three hundred grand, yeah, it's not very common. But I think I have heard of one of our companies that has done that before. Okay, and Ryan, did you have a question? Did you have your hand up? Ran. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, and the cost of the boost that Wusada does help coordinate um, is for the just for someone starting out. It, it used to be about five thousand. Mm -hmm. How much is that now that they could expect to just for their initial trade show if they're just starting out? I mean, it all just it depends on the show and things like that, and the the year the the economical yeah. climate like it just it all just depends um and I mostly just work with the companies I don't work in the global connect uh program all that much I don't overlap with them I so I can't really give you a good educated guess I don't know if Julie you could but it all you know it I mean Kel Kelsey is right it just depends I mean some of these trade shows they have living rooms set up nicer than my home <laughs> you know it, it's like <laughs> It's amazing the money that some of these companies spend, but a 10 by 10 booth could be anywhere from five to eight thousand dollars. You know, I mean, that's just an example. I mean, you know, again, it depends on the market. It depends on how much Wasada is able to subsidize um, and negotiate with with the USA Pavilion and you know the the trade show organizers. So. Um, that's why like a, a winter fancy foods is a really good opportunity if they do a kiosk, because I think that costs companies maybe about fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's a really great way to get exposure and you don't have to have a whole booth set, set up. You know, you're just you know, you're bringing a banner maybe and, and samples and, and brochures, but you're not trying to outfit a 10 by 10 booth so that it looks professional and inviting and so it's a it's a really great opportunity okay. we've, we've got a few more minutes i do have three more questions but i want to wait does anybody else have any questions at all Okay, so for the calendar year schedule, if folks are wanting to encourage uh, folks, particularly with the fund match program, to get in queue for, uh, you know, potentially participating, what's the general calendar uh, time to get that on their radar? Um, usually August, August first. Is a good okay. time. Mm -hmm. So uh, now, now is a good time to get the word yeah. out. If people are interested at all, mm -hmm. it's coming up, and they can then be set up for the next year and kind of get uh, cued into that cycle. Okay, and I know I want to add something real quick. So, yeah. so the other thing is that Wasada is pushing more and more to get our activities up there sooner and sooner. So you can go to Wasada's website at any time and see the activities for the next year. And so what I tell companies is, um, you know, you can look at the website, but um, be conservative on what you yeah. apply for because you pay 6%. And, and so um, you cannot get 6%. So say I, I'm a company, I sign up for three activities, but I only go to one. You're going to pay 6% mm -hmm. on those three activities but you're not going to get, you know, if you only attend one, you're not going to get part of that funding back. And so you can always add more activities, but but you can't get you can't take part away. Of that. Yeah, you can't take away. Yeah. So 
Um, so always be conservative, knowing that you can you can add as you mm-hmm. go, you know, as your your plan comes together. Okay. And this one is for either of you ladies, distribution networks, in-country distribution networks. What support can a business potentially anticipate? That is, if someone asked me that question, that's normally when I'd send them <laughs> to <Okay>. Julie. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so are, are, are you looking for like a distributor in a market? Um, for Washington State, if it's somewhere where we've got representation, I'm going to connect you with, say, Danny Kim in Korea, because that's part of his job is is to 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 help you, um, uh, you know, find a distributor. If it's a market where Wasada doesn't have a contractor or Washington State doesn't have representation, the foreign ag services have offices in a lot of these international markets. And they can help you find, um, they can send you a list of different distributors that you can connect with and and find out if that's the route you want to go. Um, so, you know, can can interview them as as kind of part of your your business, I guess. So so there's different ways, I guess, depending on which market you are um, trying to find distribution in, I guess. OK. And Maddie Merton from uh, the Economic Development Board of uh, Tacoma Pierce County has a question. Uh, great presentation. Will the WSDA do site visits in Western Washington next year, per- particularly Pierce County? So um, this year, we we would love to do some site visits. We're we're going to be in Western Washington. So next year. We'll probably, you know, go back to the Western Washington, you know, Eastern Washington. We're just now starting to kind of come up with our uh, week long, you know, schedule. And so we really haven't pinpointed any site vi- visits yet, but things are starting to kind of swir- swirl around. I mean, our our reps say because a lot of them only come once a once a year. And so. You know, there are certain things they haven't seen or they really want to see. So we try to make that happen. Um, so if anybody has any suggestions, you can let me know, because now is the time where we're we're starting to to talk about and put together our itinerary. Okay. And Lori Fazio. Uh, from um, Clallam EDC asks, thank you for the presentation. Will the slide decks be sent out? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll send them to Diana and then she can mm-hmm. send them out to everybody. And I want to leave some time for, I have one more question and we've got about five minutes left, but I want to make sure if there's anybody else has questions. How about um, support for product customizations? I know that's kind of in the weeds a little bit, but they used to be able to refer people to help um, better prepare their product for a foreign market. I always thought that was very cool in the sense that they could take a particular product and say, uh, and do a t- test in foreign markets. Is that something that's available that you know of through any of your contacts? I believe it was Oregon had that back at one hmm. point. So I'm not sure the question, I guess. So um, so For- our, our reps, if, um, you know, when you meet with them, um, so, so I've got an, an example. It was in, you know, it was with the Japan rep and it was a, a hard cider company and the rep was able to give them like, like a slight profile change, you know, taste profile change. And then the company was able to go make that that tweak. And then they started sending product to Japan. So is that what you mean? Or yes. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. So just that something a little bit different that it wouldn't sell as well, but if you do this, that might yeah. help. Exactly. So that is yep. it's very cool, I think. Yeah. So if it's if, if it's where we've got representatives, they definitely can tell you, you know, that's too sweet or and, you know, we 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 like tart or, you know, just just kind of the the different uh, flavor profiles. Um, and then eventually, of course, it's great to get out to the market. So we don't tell companies you need to go today. But if there's a market you're going to focus on, it's really key to get out into the market to learn the, you know, to observe and see the customs and the markets and and. And Wasada can can help you with the funding, you know, get to those markets by going to different trade shows or using fun fun match for different trade shows. So um, and then there's the step grant as well that yeah. that can help do do that work, at, you know, as well. And so a lot of our companies apply for the step grant um, as well. So. OK. And Matt asks, is. It was probably answered, but the site visit is from international reps, correct? And he is near Mount Vernon, and he thanks you for the presentation. And he's referring to the August 19 through 26 visit. Yes. So, so um, right. So our um, so we bring our reps to Washington once a year, and that's you know the Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Japan. Uh, South Korea and Mexico, Central America. And so our staff and our five reps and we try, um, I mean, the main reason they come is for one on one consultation meetings, which will be held in Seattle for a day and a half and a half a day in Mount Vernon. But then we try to do company visits, you know, site visits as well so that they can learn about, you know, some some of the different industries in um, Washington. And so they've talked about they really want to see pet food. So there there's some increasing in um, pet food exports. So we're going to try to go to one or two, um, you know, pet food companies. Um, we've talked about berries this year because, of course, Mount Vernon is a great area, Skagit Valley. And, you know, that Linden area is great for for berries. So so we're starting to kind of kick around the the different things we've talked about potatoes pop potentially so so right now we're just trying to decide so if you've got any suggestions feel free to reach out i would love to talk to you um and you know it would be great for us to uh to incorporate that into our schedule so we basically travel around for that week the 19th um, for the week of the 19th, um, doing site visits and one-on-one -on -one consultations. So. With the people that are that you have contracted internationally, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so like our, our, our in-market reps, yep. Wow. Our in-market reps and then our, our five staff. So, so this year, some of the reps bring staff. So I think there's going to be 12 of us. So we, we get on a bus <laughs> And we, um, you know, tra travel around. So yeah, that sounds like that sounds like a that sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 